ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Bahamas commits to re-examine its financial services model as it seeks to regain its footing as a leader in the market. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Bahamas tonight. It's common for small island developing states such as The Bahamas to adopt models from other countries that can help advance various sectors from our economy. But it was at the Commonwealth Heads of Government Business Forum in Malta where Minister of Finance, Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie and his delegation learned that the Bahamas played a key role in the success of one of our competitors. Clint Watson tonight is in Malta. The Bahamas has cultivated one of the most robust and politically stable economies in the region whose tax climate, skilled workforce and attractive lifestyles continue to attract high net worth investors in commercial and real estate ventures. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie telling the Commonwealth Heads of Government Business Forum that our success in building a stable economy is attributed to twin economic pillars of tourism and financial services. In the Bahamas, we were one of the first countries to regulate trust company business, a niche area of wealth management that we carved out as uniquely ours in the financial services world. Many countries in the Commonwealth, particularly those in the Caribbean, have engaged in the export of services, both financial and general business services, as a means to grow their economies and to provide modern opportunities to their citizens. And I will offer to you that the business of financial services has the potential to lift countries out of poverty, to make advances in terms of education and infrastructure, and to create a vibrant middle class. Mr. Christie outlined what he considered keys to success in the financial services and business sectors. Such as business environment, political stability, and collective trust in the legal system. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, these are the same tenets that support better governance. And so this industry is not only of economic benefit, but will encourage its participants to improve their systems of go governance as well. The Prime Minister noted that to have a thriving financial services jurisdiction, a country must invest in modern legislation and procedures. Which result in sound business practices and efficient legal systems. Successful setters also require low levels of corruption. These are all core elements necessary for meaningful economic development. Mr. Christie suggested that with the potential of growth opportunities and sustainability for the Commonwealth, the body ought to be more supportive in development rather than reacting with a high degree of unfortunate suspicion. Nonetheless, he says the Bahamas, as a responsible financial center, understands we must meet the challenges of regulating in a globalized environment. In Malta, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. To news from the courts now, stakeholders in the Bahama case returned to the Supreme Court today. However, the hearing did not proceed as expected and was pushed back into 2016. Fern Carey tells us more. Creditors and stakeholders involved in the Bahama case returned to court Wednesday for the winding a petition of the multi-billion dollar Bahama Resort. During the brief proceeding, Crown Counsel Lauren Klein informed the court that due to recent developments in the case, the petitioner does not want to proceed with an immediate winding up of the stalled Bahama Resort. He requested that the matter be stood over to the end of January 2016 and all sides agreed. Justice Ian Winer then adjourned the matter to next year. Klein indicated that some $278 million in outstanding debt is owed to creditors, with some $205 million owed to Bahamian creditors. The resort recently moved into receivership, and last week the Board of Bahama dissolved, signaling the end of the Ismerlian leadership at the resort. Last Wednesday, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie announced 
China Exim Bank's agreement to provide interim funding to complete the resort's construction. Mr. Christie also indicated that he had been pressing the bank to make some critical decisions in order for construction to resume. Regarding a prospective buyer for Bahama, attorney Rain Munro said there are many options. It's been said that there has been a beauty parade of persons going and expressing interest. Some of it has met the press. Um, I would have thought that with such a resort, there will clearly be people interested and the bank will clearly be interested in getting some resolution for its massive investment into the ground out there. Meantime, all sides return to court on February 1st. Brian Carey, Southern S Network News. Still at court, a 44-year-old police sergeant was charged before Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt this afternoon for having unlawful sex with a minor between February and March of this year. In court, Ferguson Pratt asked the officer if he should be permitted bail, and he replied yes, because he needs to get his affairs in order at home, make a phone call, and to also seek legal counsel. Prosecutor Clifford Daxon had no objection to bail. The police sergeant was granted $5,000 bail with one surety. He must not make any contact, verbal or otherwise, with the alleged victim. The matter has been adjourned to January 22nd of next year at noon. Still at court, the Kurt McCartney murder trial finally opened today following a number of delays due to insufficient jurors. During today's proceedings, Crown prosecutors called their first witness, Police Corporal Trevor McKinney, who testified that he photographed the crime scene back on October 24, 2013. The officer indicated that he took photos of a tan-colored vehicle and a dead man lying in a pool of blood in the Gambia Village area. Detective McKinney also testified that he took photos of a cell phone found in the area of a, the body and a cell phone case. However, he said he did not include it in the album exhibited in court. When asked by the defense if he destroyed the images, the officer said he did not know where the image was. The trial continues before Senior Justice Stephen Isaacs. Sumna Ingram, Lindira Curry, O'Kell Farrington and Thorne Edwards are accused of killing and robbing McCartney.